I think we can all agree that the MCU was one of the most engaging narratives in cinema history, but things haven't had that spark ever since Endgame ended and we started getting all the series on Disney+. Plus. Well, good news, I believe things are about to get better. As broken by The Hollywood Reporter on Wednesday, October 11th, Disney has stopped production on the Daredevil Born Again series and is looking to take a step back and retool their approach to creating the rest of the Disney Plus television series from here on out. Less than half of the 18 episodes of Daredevil were made, but it was going to focus on being a lawyer procedural rather than a typical superhero action series. And apparently Matt Murdock wasn't even going to don the suit until episode 4. I mean, much of the Netflix series didn't have him in the suit either, but that was more about him becoming a hero and not him already being established as one. Well. Don't get me wrong, it sucks for the writers and directors that have put this much hard work into the series, and my heart goes out to them, truly it does. But honestly... If you read between the lines on a lot of what has been officially said by Marvel, this is the best thing the MCU could have ever asked for. For what has been said about Born Again, I don't know if I need to give an actual spoiler alert, but there was no resemblance to the Netflix series. Just three cast members reprising their roles, because apparently they killed off Foggy and Karen off screen, which is why Matt stopped being Daredevil, I guess. And Kingpin is now the mayor of New York City after backing law enforcement over the street-level vigilantes like Punisher or Spider-Man. While I do believe there is a nuanced discussion to be had, by people much smarter than I am, about the glorification of superhero vigilantes when, you know, the real world ones have committed such horrific acts. I just have a terrible gut feeling that Marvel would go back to their old playbook of, oh damn, this villain is making too much sense, let's have them kill off some random nobody so the audience doesn't agree with them. But seriously, they already did this with Killmonger, Zemo, Vulture, Ghost, Hela, Flag Smasher, and Thanos. But staying clear of that potential stinker isn't the only good thing Marvel is doing. They're also restructuring how the television series are made. And that's what I'm the most excited about. One of the biggest problems that has plagued many of the Disney Plus series is that they lacked any feeling of being a television show. Just really long movies. It may sound pedantic, but there really is a gigantic difference in how the structure of the two are written. Typically with a film, you introduce the character and the world before the inciting incident. They face those consequences and then make the choice at the end of Act 1 to continue the story. Act 2, you build on what's going on, the character moves the plot by confronting the problem, jumps some hurdles, and then gets closer to their goal. Yet, it's just out of reach by the start of Act 3. Resolve with a rewarding climax and BOOM! You got yourself a three-act structure film. Obviously, there are many examples of films that don't follow the three-act structure, but most times, audiences are more accepting of films with an easy-to-follow beginning, middle, and end. With serialized television, you typically spread one three-act structure across the entire series, and then another smaller three-act structure across the season, and then each individual episode also gets an even smaller three-act structure. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. actually uses this very well-defined structure. The entire series is about if Agent Coulson is ready to lead S.H.I.E.L.D. and if Sky is ready to be a hero. Each episode could be self-contained, but always pushes things along pretty nicely. And then each season also has its own theme that they're trying to solve. Season 1 is about a team coming together, fighting Hydra, and then realizing the threat is way too big to handle. Season 2 is about rebuilding after losing to Hydra, learning there's another way to fight back, and then Skye gets her powers for the climax of the season, but this also serves as the first act to the series. The reason shows start to feel like they've become really long movies is because they're written exactly like films, except with that single three-act structure being the series arc, and each individual episode is just a chunk of that arc instead of having one itself. And it's harder to make a self-contained limited series when what should be the series arc is spread across the greater MCU narrative. With the film, every second of the runtime, every single frame should be in service of the story. If the director can't justify why they need all that fluff, well, it's going on the cutting room floor. But sure, sometimes they can toss in a car chase scene to pad the runtime of a film and give the trailer some cool footage. Oh, uh, I hope you're now aware that any major plot point isn't going to happen during a good number of car chase scenes. Just saying, if you're in the movie theaters and need to use the bathroom but don't want to miss anything important, car chases are usually a safe bet. But back to the Disney Plus Marvel shows. The second act episodes of the series become bloated with filler because they're basically doing the same as car chase scenes. They're not all bad episodes, and there's plenty of good nuggets of entertainment in there. But does it serve the story, or is it just there to be enjoyable? All of this can be solved with a good captain at the helm to see the bigger picture, and how every beat serves the story, for every episode, for every season. A film director is the one who has the creative vision for the project, but a TV director is comparatively much more on the technical side after the directorial tone is set in episode 1. The person with the grander vision for the show is actually the showrunner. The biggest red flag of the whole Daredevil Born Again fiasco is that the public is now aware that Marvel hasn't really had any dedicated showrunners with the level of control that they should have. 
They haven't really had writers' rooms built up to collaborate for each episode, let alone each season. And there hasn't even been a series bible, a written outline of how their show would look long before production even starts. But above all that, it's not like the series creators, writers, and directors for each episode had much of a say because every decision always comes down from the suits up high. This is the story that Kevin wants. Yeah. And another major shot to the foot has been the workflow for visual effects into the story. VFX takes a long time to create and even longer to do properly. We've all seen the massive blocks of VFX artist names scroll by when we wait for the end credit scene. And still, with all of those people, they're very much overworked given the skill of visual effects in any given Marvel project. The workaround that Marvel Studios has been doing is to create the effects first and then work the story around that moment. You do see the glaringly obvious issue with that, right? You could try to create an elaborate spy thriller about shape-shifting aliens, but if someone from corporate says you need to work in this test group approved fight scene that makes no sense at all, well, you do it because there isn't any boss between you and them to prevent this bad idea from falling on your lap. You just have to make this scene make sense and mutter the five most dreadful words in Hollywood. We'll fix it in post. So why now? Well, it wasn't because some executives saw the fan backlash over recent projects, got worried that Marvel fatigue is real, and decided to start creating art again. No, actually. This lines up perfectly to the massive win that the Writers Guild of America earned against those exact same executives. Outside of the writers getting pay that matches their worth, and restrictions on AI in the writing process, every single change that Marvel Studios has announced was actually a negotiation bullet point during the WGA strike. It's about now having actual writer's rooms with guarantees of at least 19 weeks on set, which is far longer than any of the six episode event series could have offered. And again, to let the person who created the show, the showrunner, run the show. Instead of some executive who came from finance and only cares about how much revenue this can generate. And better credit for series creators when they create pilot episodes. And, uh, to actually create pilot episodes. For real, the execs seriously thought that they'd film a $100 million television series before even testing the waters by giving it a single episode to see if it's maybe good or not. None of these are major changes that are going to shake up the way Hollywood is run. This just means that we're going to watch television that was made like it used to be, before the era of streaming, before each studio segmented the distribution chain by having their own streaming service, before the suits could get away with anything because they can justify any action with a loophole of, but you see, it's not airing on broadcast television and it's not technically a television show, it's an event on our streaming service. So all of your contracts mean nothing to our new system that we just invented. No, none of that. We're just going to go to the way that it used to be, how it's supposed to be. So what does this mean for us? Taking a gigantic step back to look at this from a fan perspective again, Marvel Television is going to be, well, television. This change isn't going to happen overnight. We still have Echo being dropped in its entirety on one day in January. Agatha Darkhold Diaries wrapped back in May which was during the strike, by the way, and they're going to hold on to that until next year's Halloween, maybe with some massive reshoots. And Ironheart has just been removed altogether despite wrapping production last year. And I don't even know what's going on with the Wonder Man show, because apparently they started filming it just before the WGA and SAG strikes, yet there hasn't been any official announcements from Marvel that the show even exists. The only reason why we know it's happening is because people were picketing the production when they tried to film in downtown Hollywood. Either way, back to the positives. This is a good thing for Marvel. It will bring actual craftsmanship to the art that we enjoy. We're going to see originality brought back to the superhero stories. No more cookie-cutter projects based off what some executive thinks a focus group would enjoy. Just good films and shows. And all of this happened because the writers stood up to be heard. Now, only if we can get the demands that the actors were pushing for. Because, oh man, AI-generated background actors are going to be a stain on cinema. Seriously. What could a studio even gain from this? You can't say that it was cheaper to pay a visual effects artist to render this entire background crowd than it would be to just pay somebody $100 to sit in the bleachers for a few hours. Why? Why? But yeah, I'm excited to see what comes next. And I'm keeping an optimistic mindset about all of this, and I have no problem waiting for Daredevil Born Again if it means it's going to be good. But what do you guys think? What would you like to see from the new Daredevil series? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this week's video, please hit that like button and subscribe for more weekly content on comic books and nerd stuff. I've been Eric, and you've been awesome.